Okay, so you're standing there with a realtor and you're looking at a commercial piece of property there and you're thinking to yourself, you know, I really like this piece of property. You know, price is good. Um, I mean, I'd be willing to go as high as 10% over the property price and what they're asking for. I'd really like to try to see if I can get 10% less. Should you ever tell a realtor that? Well, that just depends. Okay, so let's just take a recap of what we just said a second ago. Should you reveal your purchase strategy to a realtor? And I said, it depends. And so what does it depend on? It depends on that relationship that you have with the realtor. Are you a client or are you a customer? Now, every state in the union has rules on disclosure that a broker has to tell people that are involved in the transaction of their relationship to both you and yours to them. All right. And every state in the union favors disclosure when it comes to real estate. So where do we find the authorities for this in the state of Florida? But uh, before we get going, let me introduce myself. My name is James Stratton. I'm the senior commercial realtor and analyst for OTG Realty Advisors in the state of Florida and in Texas. OK, we offer two offices up there. Now, today we're going to talk about or at this moment, we're going to talk about the state of Florida and what those requirements are for disclosure brokerage relationship. All right. Now. We do not provide legal advice. This is not legal advice for you. If you feel like you've entered into a transaction and signed some documents that you're not really for certain what your rights and responsibilities are in that document, I highly recommend that you contact a lawyer licensed in the state of Florida to help you through that. Also, nothing in here is, is scripted. So we kind of go with the flow. So here we go. Let's get started. So where do we find the authorities in the state of Florida for brokerage disclosure. So let's take a look here. If you look at my screen up here, we have, well, hang on, go the other direction here. You'll find it under the, the uh, 2020 Florida Statutes, Title 32, Chapter 475. All right. So section more specifically, 475.278 says, authorized brokerage relationship, presumption of transaction brokerage required disclosures. Now, this is a pretty thing, pretty interesting thing here. So the presumption of the state of uh, Florida is that no matter what, you're a transaction brokerage unless otherwise stated, all right? So we'll get to that here in a second. What is that? Well, let's go with the brokerage relationships first. So paragraph 1A, authorized brokerage relationships, a, a real estate licensee in this state. That means a person licensed in the state of Florida may enter into a brokerage relationship as either a transaction broker or as a single agent with potential buyers and sellers. And this is regardless of whether or not you're a, a realtor, that is a title given over by the National Association of Realtors. Uh, a licensee is simply just a person licensed in the state of Texas to transact real estate. Okay. All right. A real estate licensee may not operate as a disclosed or non-disclosed dual agent. And by the way, everyone in the in every state in the union has something against this. And the reason being is because you can't provide full services to both the buyer and the seller. That's what that means. Dual agency means that I'm representing both the buyer and the seller in the same transaction. That makes it impossible to get right. As used in this section, the term dual agent means a broker who represents a fiduciary, both in the prospective buyer and the prospective seller in real estate transactions. Okay, I just said that a second ago. Okay, so the, this part does not prevent a licensee from changing from one brokerage relationship to, uh, to the other as long as the buyer or the seller or both give consent as required by subparagraph 3C2. And the purpose behind that is they don't want you to be surprised if you wake up and you thought you had a, a broker representing you, but they're really not. They're really just a transaction brokerage. Before the change and the appropriate disclosure of the duties as provided in this part is made to the buyer or the seller, this part does not require a customer to enter into a brokerage relationship with any real estate licensee. I like that. That's not too bad. Okay, so the presumption here. B, presumption of transaction brokerage. It shall be presumed that all licensees operating as a transaction broker 
unless a single agent or no brokerage relationship is established, and we'll define these here in a little bit, in writing with a customer. There's that word, customer. So what does that mean? That means the transaction uh, uh, brokerage uh, presumes or contemplates that you will be a customer and not a client, which means that as a transaction brokerage, they don't owe you all the duties required of a single agent, which makes you a client. Okay, here we go. So let's define it. So transaction brokerage relationship. A transaction broker provides a limited form of representation to a buyer, a seller, or both in a real estate transaction, but does not represent either in a either in a fiduciary capacity or as a single agent. So remember I said both? That takes care of that dual agency business because you can't help them in a fiduciary manner. So you are a customer. It's okay to represent two customers, but not two clients, all right? The duties of the real estate licensee in this limited form of representation include the following, to deal with dealing honestly and fairly, accounting for all funds, so any money that you've given or transacted with, they gotta account for it, using skill, care, and diligence in the transaction. So what does that mean? That means that you're using your knowledge as a realtor, as a real estate licensee, and you're working carefully to make sure that you're, you're you're not handing somebody just some random information. You're just you're doing you're, you're doing the things the right way, and you're using diligence, which means you're you're on top of it. You're staying on top of it. You haven't blown them off. You're working diligently in the transaction. That you're going to disclosing all known facts that materially affect the value of the residential real property and are not readily observable to the buyer. Oh, by the way, so in this particular case, they're talking about the residential. This is the requirement. But you're also going to find this over in the commercial documents. We're going to look at that as well. And uh, so don't, don't get too totally confused on this. Remember, the state of Florida favors disclosure. And we want to make sure that all things are disclosed so it's even in the commercial side, even though this speaks directly about residential. Okay. Um, and this disclosing of known facts. So what do they mean by that? So let's say, for instance, that uh, it's, you can look at the property and you see that there's obviously a foundation problem or a roof problem. The broker, even though he's a transaction broker, has a requirement to disclose this to, to let you know. And, and they're going to do this a number of ways. They may come right out and say it or they may turn around and say, you know, I really recommend because I'm not a foundation expert. But I really recommend that you get yourself an inspection on this. Hire, hire an expert. All right, here we go. E, presenting all offers and counter offers in a timely manner unless a party has previously directed the licensee otherwise in writing. So what this means is that when we get an offer or counter offer, you get in there, this, that goes back to that diligence part where you're constantly, you know, you're, you're getting this information in a timely manner unless it's otherwise in writing. So what do they mean by that? So let's say, for instance, you have a piece of property that, I'm just making this up. We're just saying that the property, the the, um, uh, the owner of the property wants to list the property for 400000 and they don't want to get any offers for anything less than that. And so they put it in writing, don't bring me an offer less than 400000 Okay, so guess what? That's not going to get brought. Anyway, right, here we go. Limited confidentiality. Now, this is actually very interesting because we also work in Texas, and the Texas, uh, uh, a... Uh, uh, a sub agent, um, which is the same thing as a transaction agent here, kind of the kind of the same, and an intermediary. Uh, they're not. There's no confidentiality confidentiality at all. In fact, in Texas, as a sub agent, you're considered to be working for the seller's agent. So, as you as a buyer come to me and say, "Hey, I'll I'll, I'll I'm going to offer less, but I'll pay more," I have to tell the listing agent what I learned. Okay, here we go. Limited confidentiality, unless waived in writing by a party, this, this limited confidentiality will prevent disclosure that the seller will accept a price less than the asking or listing price, which is not the same as what I just told you. Yeah, this is the buyer side. That the buyer will pay a price greater than the price submitted in writing of the motivation or of the motivation of any party for selling or buying a property, that a seller or buyer will agree to financing terms other than those offered, or of any other information requested by a party to remain confidential. Very different. Um, 
So in this particular case, the transaction agent is in a better position. You as a as a uh, as a buyer is in a better position with the transaction agent in Florida versus Texas. Okay. All right. Here we go. Any additional duties are, that are mutually agreed to with with a party? You know, I got to be careful about that. Uh, there could be situations. Let me back up a little bit. I don't want to retract that a little bit. There could be situations where they're the same. So that's beyond the scope of what this video is, and we can do that another time. So I'm going to retract that last statement about the, the, the better off as a transaction statement in Florida versus Texas as a, as a uh, sub-agent. So I'm going to retract that. Okay. Any additional duties that are mutually agreed to with a party? All right. So now we come to the single agent relationship. Okay. So a single agent relationship doesn't contemplate a person whose status is they're single or that they're actually working in a, an office as a one man band. It just means that there's one type. You're representing one side of the transaction and not the other side. So you could be the listing broker or you could be the buyer's agency. Both of those are contemplated as being a single agency relationship. All right, here we go. Okay, single agent duties. The duties of a real estate licensee owed to a buyer or seller who engage, engages the real estate licensee as a single agent, including the following. By the way, that would be funny uh, if it was about your status. As a, there'd be a lot of single people in, in Florida as brokers. But anyway, I'm not going to talk about that. Anyway, here we go. So including the following. Number one, sometimes we get off track around here. So <laughs> there we go. Number one, dealing honestly and fairly. Okay. Loyalty. Confidentially. Confidentiality. Hmm. Must keep secrets. Obedience. This is the big one. You must obey your 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 uh, fiduciary, which is the either the buyer or the or the seller, whoever it is that you represent. So if they tell you you gotta do something, you gotta do it. Get it in writing. <laughs> Always get it in writing. All right. Full disclosure. They have a duty of full disclosure. And that covers both what your experiences are and what you can do for them. And there's just that. I mean, it's just you're being absolutely open and transparent with the person that you represent, the fiduciary. OK. Also accounting of all funds. OK, uh, which could be your escrow. It could be money that you paid them for. Any number of things to, to go out. If you paid them money to go help you acquire the property, maybe to get an inspection or get a survey, you got to account for all that. Skill, care, and diligence in the transaction, which is the same as the transaction agent. Presenting all officer offers and counter offers in a timely manner, unless the party has previously directed the li licensee otherwise in writing, which is the same as the transaction. Disclosing all known facts that are materially affected, the value of the residential real property and are not readily observable. Same. Okay. Okay. So disclosure requirements. When do you have to do this? Uh, we're going to look at a form here in a minute. And you'll see this kind of an action. You'll see it. And we're going to go through that. Um, disclosure requirements. Here we go. B. One, single agent disclosures. Duties of a single agent must be fully described and disclosed in writing to a buyer or seller either as a separate or distinct disclosure document, that can happen, or included as part of another document such as a listing agreement or other agreement for representation. Uh, so you can actually find these requirements actually in a single document that just covers the disclosure, but you can also find them in listing agreements and buyer's representation agreements. And so we're gonna look at one here in a little bit. When incorporated into other documents, the requirements notice must be as the same size, type, or larger as other provisions in the document must be conspicuous in its place so as to advise customers of their duties of a single agent, except the first sentence of the information identified in the paragraph C must be printed in uppercase and bold type. So here in the state of Florida uses that word customer again, but when you sign that document as a single agency, you flip now to being a client. Yeah. And by the way, there's an acronym, old car, uh, and basically, it's been stated there, but it's easy to remember. We use the acronym old car, old car. Let me see if I can do it. So you have uh, obedience, loyalty, disclosure, uh, confidentiality, accounting, and uh, reasonable care and due diligence. There you go. Not too bad. All right, here we go. Transition. Transition to transaction broker disclosure. A single agent broker 
agent relationship may be changed to a transaction broker relationship at any time during the relationship between an agent and a principal, provided the agent first obtains the principal's written consent to the change to the change in relationship. So when would this might be? Well, it might be a situation maybe where they want to avoid being a dual agent because you come into the office and you want representation and they have a, um, a listing that they that they have and they want both sides of that commission. And so they may switch, get get it in writing from you to allow them to go to a transaction broker, which means you don't have that that fiduciary relationship again. So there's some duties that you're not getting. Uh, they can't give you full representation, just limited representation. The contents of the disclosure. Single agent duties disclosure. The notice or the notice required under paragraph B1 must include the following information in the form. And by the way, I just simply skipped over this other part because it's the same. Okay. Single agent notice. Florida law requires. This is exactly a reprint. You'll see this in the document here in a second. And it says Florida law requires a real estate license to operate as a single agent disclosure to buyers and sellers to sellers their duties. Did I read that right? Let me read this right. Florida law requires that real estate licensees operating as a single agent's disclose, agents disclose to buyers and sellers their duties. Seems like there should be a comment there. As a single agent, blah, owe to the following duties. And it goes to that dealing honestly and fairly, loyalty, confidential obedience, full disclosure, accounting for all funds, skill, care, and due dili or diligence in the transaction, presenting all offers and, and counter offers in a timely manner, unless a party has previously directed the licensee otherwise in writing and disclosing all known facts that have materially affect the value of residential real property and are not readily observable. We're going to see that in a form in a second. So I read over it kind of fast. And it gives them a signature. Okay, transition to the transition disclosure to gain the principal's written consent to change the relationship. A licensee must use the following disclosure. Consent to transition. And it goes, Florida law allows a real estate licensee who represents a buyer or seller as a single agent to change from a single agent relationship to a transaction brokerage relationship in order for the licensee to assist both parties in a real estate transaction by providing a limited form of representation to both the buyer and the seller. This change in the relationship cannot occur without the prior written consent. And then it goes through it. it says the same exact thing that was in the statute. Dealing honestly and fairly, accounting for all funds, using skill, care, and diligence in the transaction, disclosing all known facts that materially affect the value of the residential real property and are not readily observable to the buyer, presenting all offers to counter offers in a timely manner unless the party has previously directed the licensee. Otherwise, and here we go, limited confidentiality. Unless waived, waived in writing by a party, this limited confidentiality will prevent the disclosure that the seller will accept the price less than the asking or listing price. Then the buyer will pay a price greater than the price submitted in a, written, in, a, in a written offer of the motivation of any party for selling or buying a property. The selling a that a seller or buyer will agree to financing terms or otherwise other than those offered or of any other information requested by a party to remain confidential. And additional duties are entered into by this or separate written agreement. Limited representation means that a buyer or seller is not responsible for the acts of the licensee. Additionally, parties are given up the rights to the, to the undivided loyalty of the licensee. This aspect of limited representation allows the licensee to facilitate a real estate transaction. Facilitate, which means you're getting in between both of them, right? A real estate transaction by assisting both the buyer and the seller, but a licensee will not work to represent one party to the detriment of the other party when acting as a transaction broker to both parties. So they basically just told you what uh, that this this limited ability to do dual agency because it's not really agency, it's just that you're a customer now, and they can get they can help facilitate uh, the transaction between you as a buyer and the seller without providing all the services that are required as, of a client or its fiduciary. Okay, so what do we got? We got this next one, which is kind of obscure. Is this non brokerage? or no brokerage relationship. One of the things you're gonna find out here is that it doesn't provide all the things that's similar to a transaction, but doesn't have all of that. One of them is that limited confidentiality and representation, right? So here we go. No brokerage relationship duties. A real estate licensee owes to a potential seller or buyer with whom the licensee has no brokerage relationship the following duties. Dealing honestly and fairly, 
disclosing all known facts that materially affect the value of the residential real property, which are not readily observable to the buyer, and accounting for all funds entrusted to the licensee. Wow, there's some parts missing here. That list, that, that limited confidentiality and representation. Disclosure requirements. Duties of the licensee who has no broker relationship with a buyer or seller must be fully described and disclosed in writing to the buyer or seller. The disclosure must be made before the showing of the property. When it incorporated into other documents, the requirement must be the same size. It's the same information that was up above. That's just so that you can't hide it in the document someplace and the person doesn't see it and they get tricked into this type of relationship. Okay. And so here's basically what it is. If you notice, it's much less. It's much less than what was actually there. Uh, so the only thing that the, the no broker, no broker's relationship has is dealing honestly, fairly, disclosing all known facts that materially affect the value of the residential property, which are not really observable, and accounting of all funds. There's no confidentiality or uh, you don't get all the other duties associated with the other two types. All right. So we want to keep this thing really simple. Let's get out of the, the statutes and let's go over here to the actual form. And one of the things you're going to find is so, so here's this big old gigantic form. Let's see if we can scroll all the way to the top here. I hope I didn't make anybody dizzy doing that. Here, let's just come on up here. All right, so exclusive right of, of a sales listing agreement. It's really the same. The flip side of that is a buyer's agency agreement. You notice you got paragraph one, two, three, four, five, six. We're not there yet. Seven. I feel like Count Dracula from Sesame Street. Uh, eight. Compensation. Cooperation is nine. And here we go. Finally, way down to this form. We're disclosing this relationship. Okay, here we go. Ten, broker's relationship. And if you notice, it's exactly what I saw, what we saw in the statute. It's dealing honestly and fairly, loyalty, confidentiality, obedience, full disclosure, accounting of all funds, skill, care, and diligence, and transit, presenting all offers and counter offers in a timely manner unless a party has previously directed the licensee otherwise in writing and disclosing all known facts. And if you know this, you got to put a signature here and a date. Yes, indeedy. All right, so here is where they change from this single agency to a transaction. As a transaction broker, well, looky here. It's got the same information in it again that's in the statute. And, of course, you have to disclose it here. So again, you're dealing dealing honestly and fairly, accounting for all funds, using skill, care, and diligence in the transaction, disclosing all known facts that materially affect the value of residential real property and are not readily observable to the buyer. I did say earlier, if you recall, that this also works for commercial. Do the same thing. Uh, presenting all offers and counter offers in a timely manner unless a party has previously directed the licensee, otherwise in writing, limited confidentiality, and I'm writing that whole paragraph, any additional duties, that are into, entered to by this or by a separate written agreement. Limited representation means that a buyer or seller is not responsible for the acts of the licensee. Additionally, if parties are given up their rights to the undivided loyalty of the licensee, the aspect of limited representation allows the licensee to facilitate a real estate transaction by assisting both the buyer and the seller. A licensee will not work to represent one party to the detriment of the other party when acting as a transaction broker to both parties. So to recap, we really need to know what your relationship is to the licensee or the realtor, if you're working with the realtor, as to whether or not you're truly a client or a customer. So if you're in a transaction relationship with the realtor and you come to them and you say, I will do this. I, I want the property uh, for, uh, I'll pay as much as 20% over asking price, but I want to try to get less than 20% of the asking price. That's not protecting you. They're going to go directly over to the single agent and tell them exactly what you told them. You need a representative that works for you as a single agent, and then you can tell them that, and that will not get disclosed. Okay. All right. So, and then again, there's some limited capacity on confidentiality too. That goes, we need to do another video that ties that up a little bit better. All right. So this video went really long and I really didn't want to go that long, but I appreciate you sticking with me. And I, I look forward to, uh, to throw some more videos out there for you to help you out with some of these forms. Have a great day.